Got something a little bit different for you today, a little extra. Those of you that uh, watch Sailing Fair Isle will know that we produce a fortnightly vlog, uh, but what you might not know is that for 35 years before that I was a cameraman editor, mainly for the BBC, but worked all around the world, and with all sorts of different cameras. So I wanna pass on a few tips and tricks on gear and filmmaking in general. So one of the first things you're probably going to ask is what camera is best to use? Obviously nowadays you've got everything from a phone to a full frame DSLR type camera that you can use and lots in between. So what's the difference? Well, basically you can break it down into one of the major differences between these cameras is the size of the sensor. They're very small in something like an iPhone or GoPro, slightly bigger in, in those. Then you've got sort of up to these, which they call a micro four thirds type camera it gets a bit bigger all the way to a full frame camera like this uh, Canon 5D. So how does the sensor size affect the pictures you're gonna get? Well, really in two major ways. One, small sensors like you're gonna get in a phone or a GoPro are just no good in low light. So if you're trying to shoot in the dark or even as the sun goes down, although the picture might look good on, the, on your phone, the, the minute you blow it up, it's just gonna look all grainy. It's putting gain on the chip to make it more sensitive and that just just makes it look awful basically. So, you know, although you might think you're getting a good picture on the small screen, especially the ones on the backs of GoPros and things, you're really not. So uh, don't be fooled by that. Uh, something like this inherently is much more sensitive just because of the size of its chip. There's more to it and that depends on the lenses you're using as well and how you're using that lens, but that's just a, you know, a fact between the two things. Uh, something with a big sensor is always gonna be better in low light than something with a small one. The other thing about them is that they change inherently the depth of field that you get. Okay, let's have an example of that then. I've got a couple of cameras here. One is this one. It's a Fujifilm X-T4. It's uh, an APS-C camera, this. So that's sitting between the micro four thirds and the full frame. It's, it's sort of the biggest I'd want to go to for, for vlogging, really. You can see this, I've got this one in a, a a rig you know in a frame uh, this is called small frame this one uh, it's good because you can mount different things on it and uh, you know keeps it easier to handle you can do it one-handed easier with this um, but yeah I think the full frame ones really for vlogging are, are too much so this is the maximum vlogging wise I'm going to get with a, a camera the biggest biggest sensor I'm actually really going to be using for, for vlogging so we'll see how this compares to your GoPro which uh, obviously has got a much smaller uh, sensor and see you know how much depth of field this you know this gives and what that sort of does to the picture so first of all then let's, let's actually do this one first if I have a little look show you this frame um, I mean I've got the, the uh, this GoPro set to the settings that are going to give me the best looking picture like ProRes which means that I can in post give it sort of better uh, colors contrast that sort of stuff for gamma curve um, but there's nothing I can do about the the depth of field in this it is what it is because of the size of the sensor and because it's got a fixed aperture uh, you're going to see you know most of the boat in the background sharp as well as me being sharp that's just the you know the way this camera does it so if I put that one down now and uh, pick up this one, the Fujifilm. Uh, do the same things, much more difficult to hold even with the, the rig here to, to have, and I'm gonna take my glasses off because I wanna show you something else as well. When you have a camera like this, when you've got a, a pull out screen, if you're looking at yourself at the screen, which is, you know, it's, it's tempting to do because you want to see what picture you're getting. Um, but while you're doing that, you're not looking to, talking to the audience and it's you know it's a mistake lots of people make when they first start they start looking at themselves in the screen you don't want to do that you want to talk to your audience you're going to hold this with both hands because it would be easier so I'm um, as wide as this lens can go it's a reasonably fast lens 2.8 so that's the sort of shot it's going to give you I'll give you a sort of a, a grab of this frame up against a, a grab of the one uh, we've just done before but you should be able to see that this one is just nicer really more filmic looking because the backgrounds should be a little bit out of focus uh, I'm nicely sharp in focus I can tap on the screen to uh, tell it where to focus and it's focused on my face so yeah that should be a better picture so stabilization is really important here. if you're doing vlogging type work, you're moving around, nothing gives you away more than wobbly cam type vision as being amateurish really. Um, I mean it's more than than just you know a little bit of wobble on a camera, it's, it's how you move a camera as well. You know you, you don't sort of just wander around ever with a camera or showing like you might sort of look yourself, that's not what a camera move is. A camera move starts somewhere, it has a shot where it starts and it finishes so you've got to make sure you do that. You you know, find a, find a good shot, hold it, think of where you're gonna go, go to the next shot, 
hold it and that move between might be a, a nice move you know a nice move you want them to be sort of reasonably slow don't don't sort of wave about too fast either but what we're talking about here is actually stabilization when you're maybe walking along as well you want that to be smooth um, so as I said before, from the seven upwards, it got really good. This is a nine, so you know this this should be really good. So if I walk along the side deck with this, I'll switch to it, and you know, if we want to come round and say you know duck under ropes and walk along here, switch hands, I can talk as I go, come round, get to here, turn round. Uh, you know it should be really nice and steady. I mean I can't really run on this deck, I'll run off the end and uh, fall in the water, but you know this it should be you know just a nice experience to, to watch that, to, uh, to be able to as a viewer see something walk along and it all be sort of quite smooth because this keeps it smooth. So now I'm going to switch to this camera which is a JH5 Lumix. Really this is sort of the best you're going to get from stabilization wise in uh, this sort of camera, mirrorless camera or DSLR for that matter, because it's got uh, image stabilization in the lens and in the body on this camera. So I'll have a little walk along with this and see how this compares. Okay, so I'll do the same walk. I'll try and keep it as stable as I possibly can. Come to the end here, turned around, and we'll walk back. It's quite difficult uh, <laughs> trying to hold this stable but it seems to do a reasonable job when you look at it on here but let's uh, I think when you look at that back on the screen you'll see stabilization the GoPro will be much better so they're brilliant for having fun with I mean experiment with these sorts of things I mean this is just a GoPro on a stick That one wasn't one of the little flimsy uh, selfie type poles. I actually uh, just clamped it to the end of a boat hook. So, uh, you know, it's something a bit meatier that you can put in and on the end of. And you can get even, even more sort of uh, wacky stuff with these things. This is uh, a GoPro Max. And I'm gonna do a little series on these because I'm gonna test out uh, a couple of different 360 cameras. Uh, they're, they're quite cool. You can get cool effects like this. This is something we did in Venice over Christmas. Uh, but you can just sort of have it on a stand, put it down somewhere, and because it's recording everything around it, you can in post then just pan it around and get the shot you want. It's like having a you know its own cameraman uh, in post because you can you've got you're covering everything. You've got all the shots, so you know it makes it look like there is a cameraman behind there. Uh, you can also do things like this. Well, it's flat calm. We're going very slowly, and we've spent the day looking at the view. By the time we get there, the sun will be setting, we'll drop the anchor and say that's the perfect end to a perfect sail without wind. So that's just a, a GoPro on the end of a halyard, which is a rope from the top of the mast and swinging round. And because, although this will swing all over the place, it is filming everything. So again, in the edit, I can pick the bit that I want and have it come round. So there's all sorts of fun that you can have with uh, Know, these sorts of cameras. So really it's a case of different cameras for different jobs. Uh, action cams like the GoPro are great but they do have their limitations. Uh, sound is uh, an issue with things like a GoPro. There are ways around that but that's a whole video in itself really and you've got to go through the fact that it is an automatic camera so you've got to know there are some things it can't really cope with. Uh, you know if you get it the lighting wrong you're just going to be silhouetted. There's, there's not really a lot you can, you can do with it but there are some settings so again it's a video that you need to know to, to go through that if a GoPro is what you're using. But know the other limitations too. It's a wide lens. It's really sort of made as an action cam to be close. If I wanted to get a shot of that gullet over there, then really it's just something uh, you know that's sitting there in the far distance, doesn't make a good shot. I mean, really, if you wanted the range of shots, then maybe uh, an iPhone or you know, a similar phone with multiple lenses uh, might be better because I can get a shot with this and I can go through the lenses and, uh, and give you something that's tighter and it's a more reasonable shot. 
the multiple lenses part of that is very important because it's those that's giving you the good shot if you're trying to zoom in by pinching on an iPhone then what you're actually doing is zooming in on that already very small sensor and you're really picking out those pixels and it'll just pull the picture apart it might look good on a tiny screen but once you put it on a, a decent screen you think oh my god that that looks terrible so yeah it's not something you should ever do with an iPhone if you're using it for everything really try and make sure you you've got one with the uh, with the three lenses or better still if you're gonna um, you know try and want to do shots like that then any sort of uh, compact type camera like this whether it's a mirrorless or a DSLR type camera you know with this I can get a really good tight shot and of course if you uh, really need to get the close-up shot if you're doing wildlife or something like that then you need to actually have a, a lens that's capable of, of doing that for you so really you just got to look at what sort of things you want to shoot and, and the best way of doing that and uh, what you can afford and what knowledge you have of the cameras and always remember even with the little compact cameras that are pretty automatic if you've got a little bit of, uh, of knowledge about how they work then there are some things that you can override to uh, to get things looking a lot better you can do that in the edit as well so we'll try and go through a lot of that as the series continues thanks for watching